Once we have started learning algebra, we get to a point where we can solve formula problems. Formula problems look like this one. It is minus 8 degrees Celsius right now. What is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? We are given a formula that we can use to solve this problem. This formula is used to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius. The trick with formula problems is that they have more than one variable and you're given information that allows you to replace all variables with numbers except for one. And then you will use your algebra skills to solve for that one remaining variable. Here, the degree Celsius is given, so my C is going to be replaced with a minus 8. I rewrite the formula, and I plug in any numbers I'm given. Now the F is my only unknown. I'm going to use the fundamental rule of proportions to cross multiply and solve this. Top times bottom gives me negative 8 times 9 equals bottom times top gives me 5 times F minus 32. This becomes negative 72 equals 5F minus 160. Now using my usual algebra skills, I'm going to move the minus 160 to the left of the equals. I am going to add 160 to both sides. I get minus 72 plus 160 equals 5F minus 160 plus 160. I have added 160 to both sides. These cancel and I end up with minus 72 plus 160 which is equal to positive 88 equals 5F. Now, all I have to do is divide both sides by 5. My f is being multiplied by a 5, so I divide that side by a 5. What I do on one side, I have to do on the other. I'm dividing both sides by 5. These cancel. My f is isolated and is equal to 88 divided by 5, which is equal to 17.6. And I have to apply the unit of measure to my answer. It's the last step with a formula problem. Since the question was asking for a temperature in Fahrenheit, I have to give the answer in degrees Fahrenheit. I will say 17.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That is my final answer to this formula problem. Here's another formula problem. This time, some of the information we need is given in this paragraph, and other bits of information that we need are given in the diagram. We have to take the numbers we're given and use them to replace the letters in our formula, all of the letters except one, and then solve for the letter that is left. In this case, we are given the area 30 meters squared. In the formula for area of a trapezoid, I replace my A with a third. The big B is 9, and the little b is 6. The H has to remain an H for now, and the 2 is just part of the formula. Now, first thing I'm going to do is combine the two numbers inside the bracket. So I get 30 equals 15H over 2. I have choices about how I simplify this, but I'm going to use the approach. My algebraic expression, including my variable, is being divided by a 2, so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by a 2. These cancel. 2 times 30 is 60 and will be equal to 15h. We're nearly finished. My h is being multiplied by a 15, so I divide both sides by 15. These cancel. h is equal to 4, and all I'm missing is my unit of measure. Since the area was given in meters squared and the side lengths were given in meters, that means this height, which is also a side length, is going to be 4 meters in length. This is how we solve a formula problem in algebra course. We might be given the formula for each problem, or we might be asked to memorize formulas before our test. But either way, if we replace all of the letters except one with a given number, then all we have to do is use our basic algebra skills 
and we can solve for the letter that is left, and that is going to be the answer to our problem. Don't forget at the end to apply any necessary unit of measure.